Is it possible for distant galaxies to be moving away from us faster than the speed of light? And if it is, would it be possible for us to see them? Surprisingly, the answer to both questions is a resounding yes. How is that possible? How can something travel faster than the speed of light? Today we will try and paint an accurate picture of the universe based on the Lambda Cold Dark Matter model, which is the best cosmological model today. Once we have painted that picture, the answers to our questions will be straightforward. Let's assert that some kind of space-time quantum foam sort of something existed before our own universe began before our Big Bang. Then we simply let Heisenberg's uncertainty principle go to work for us. If we look at the tiniest speck allowed by quantum mechanics, a small volume with a Planck length as its linear scale, the speck would have a volume of 10 to the minus 99 cubic centimeters. And the largest amount of mass or energy that we could put in this volume without it becoming its own black hole, is about one one hundred thousandth of a gram. Interestingly, the uncertainty principle allows this much stuff to be created out of nothing for as long as 10 to the minus 43 seconds. Not a very long time, but it will prove to be enough. Because if that much energy is created in the form of a certain type of scalar field, then we have just successfully created a universe. The best model of how our early universe grew after that initial quantum fluctuation created it includes inflation, a period when the scalar field divides space into a brief period of extreme exponential expansion. During inflation, space erupted from its tiny beginnings into an unknowably huge volume. This enormous expansion generated an enormous amount of gravitational binding energy, at least 10 to the 85th grams. And this was counterbalanced by a corresponding group of positive energy in the scalar field. What began as a mere fraction of a gram of energy has now become 10 to the 85th grams. This is a huge number large enough to account for all the matter and energy that exists today. But notice that the total energy in the universe is within a quantum fluctuation of equaling zero. As a byproduct of the enormous growth of space during the inflationary period, Tiny quantum fluctuations grew into macroscopic fluctuations in the density of the scalar field, making it ever so slightly lumpy. This lumpiness provided the seeds for the formation of stars and galaxies and all the structure we see in the universe. At the end of inflation, the temperature throughout all of space was still enormously hot. But as space continued to expand, it cooled, and the energy of the scalar field, which now filled all the new and enormously huge volume of space, decayed into dark matter, and dark energy, and normal matter. The photons, and quarks, and electrons, which in turn settle down into the protons, neutrons, and atoms that populate the universe today. After about 380,000 years of expansion and cooling, charged particles got together to form neutral atoms. And suddenly the photons that were bumping into charged particles every second or two were free to zip unhindered across space. This is the origin of the cosmic microwave background that we see today.
let's let this volume of blue dots represent all of space at that era. Then let's focus our attention on this tiny portion that has a radius of about 42 million light years. This is the region that will be all of our observable universe in 13.7 billion years. Our Earth will form somewhere in the center of this region in about 9 billion years. But we have a lot of expansion to experience first. Imagine that you are standing on a 100 meter track and someone 99 meters away is going to walk towards you. There's the starter's pistol, and the walk begins. But there's a problem. The track is stretching, growing longer as he walks. He takes a one meter step every second, but the track grows one meter for every 100 meters every second. After 10 seconds, the walker has taken 10 steps, but the remaining 89 meters has grown so that he still has 98 meters from you. Another 10 seconds and he's still almost 97 meters away. It will take him 460 seconds, but he will eventually reach you. And during that time, the track has stretched so that it is now 10,000 meters long. The other end of the track is now moving away from you much faster than the walker can walk. If he had to start there now, he would never get here. And the question of how far he walked is ambiguous. We could say he walked 99 meters because that was the distance at the beginning. Or we could say that he walked 9,900 meters because that was the distance at the end. Or we could say 460 meters because that is his normal speed times the time it took. 